<laughs> All right. Yeah, what is up, guys? Welcome to episode two of Sideline Chatter here on a nice Sunday night. Fresh off a nice football Sunday. How's it going tonight, James? It's not going too well, Chief. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to you <laughs> and the people out there, but uh getting waxed in all my leagues this week. I think I might win in one out of five, sadly. It ain't good. Mm-hmm. It's not good, it's not good. How about you, Chief? How you doing? How's you doing today? All right, uh, I'm feeling good tonight, you know. I'm like four and across my four leagues tonight. He's the real guru of the show, not me. I don't say all that, but <laughs> I'm through four weeks of the season I am feeling pretty good about myself. I just beat my brother. Shout out Derek. Mm, a little family rivalry. Yep. Beat down. Alan Robson popped off at the end there, but hopefully I'm before now in that league and I'm feeling good. That's all I gotta say about my, my day today. I, it must be nice. One of us has to feel good, so that I'm glad it's you. I'm glad it's you. Genuinely, <laughs> sure, I'm happy that too. it's you. I'm glad it's you. But uh <laughs> we're talking about our first podcast and how how uh we appreciated all the feedback from you guys. Sir, I love you guys. <laughs> Sir. Uh it went pretty well for us we think we thought we could improve on some things you know but uh but i mean for the you know yeah obviously we definitely could do better but for the first one you know i, I thought we did pretty good yeah. it seemed the feedback we got was kind of the same thing but i appreciate all the suggestions and everything yes sir sharing it everything the youtube appreciate channel it. starting off a little sun here you know we're trying folks yeah. <laughs> we are trying make sure to go subscribe to that and all of our social medias tell your friends Tell your friends, tell your tell your uncles, tell whoever, tell uh, your players aunts, in the fantasy uncles. leagues. I mean, if your they're grandma, sure. Tell, tell your grand, <laughs> <laughs> tell your grandma Anybody. to tell her friends. Well, yeah, uh, <laughs> it was a pretty interesting Sunday, I would say. High scoring, Some, yeah, very high scoring. Not the four o'clock games, but that was awful. Those but, brutal. Yeah. but the one o'clock games were pretty good. We had really big performances. From running backs to receivers to quarterbacks that you might have expected, some bounce back players, some ones that actually came through, and maybe some guys will highlight to pick up later who had breakout games. And also, you know, the chokers, the, ch- the chokers, <laughs> the Juddersons, the, the Juddersons, all the nutty motherfuckers out there. But <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's start recapping uh, who had like the biggest performances of the day. I think the biggest one this week. Was Joe Mixon? Joe Mixon finally woke up finally for those up. those Joe Mixon owners that were panicking a little bit. It took a, a a shitty Jaguars defense, but around here we take anything. That's true. Fantasy, we, we take whatever we can get. Garbage time, whatever. He, but yeah, the one he actually the the I think it's like a thirty four yard rushing touchdown. He looks yeah. slow as dirt. He did. But if you're an owner, you will take the touchdown, a receiving touchdown too, I believe. He did, yes, he did. So I mean, you gotta ha- you gotta day. be happy with that three touchdown day. You can't com- never complain, especially especially, if he, the f- especially how he didn't do that well, and you took him in maybe your first right. or second round. Like that's definitely helps, and hopefully he continues that way. Shout out Rowell out there for having faith in Mixon. I told you to keep faith in him. Mike Davis, Joe Mixon, said Joe Mixon for yes, sure. Sir. Yes, Although yeah. Davis had a good day as well, but mm-hmm. not as good as Joe Mixon. 151 rushing yards, 30 receiving yards, and a hat trick. So that's what you're looking for in your first round pick, and it's you a finally- weak weak winner right there. Finally, fucking came through for you. Excuse my French. I was told <laughs> I was told I need to stop cursing so much. I'm sorry. Just, just <laughs> reviving, doing our, doing our thing. Reviving. This is a part of my daily language. I guess I need to I'm go to church. Next so we got we got Dak Prescott. Yes, sir. Go. And Amari Cooper and CD Lamb. Mm-hmm. Cowboys had a very good day today. I've been I've been a uh, advocate for Dak. <laughs> This whole fantasy offseason, ever since back in August, or ever since they drafted CD, I think it showed that they were going. He's what? the one. He's the guru. <laughs> he's the guru here. Shit. I'm just here. That was the one player this year I was super high on. I was telling everybody, like, he's going to be the third best behind Mahomes and Lamar, but it looks like Russell's going to be one, and then Dak well, Lamar's going to be fucking 12. Guy blows. You said who? Lamar. Lamar. No, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just Breaking panicking because of McCaffrey and he's not doing too well. But no, Dak had 502 yards today, That's four TDs, crazy. and only one pick and a fumble. But we take, we take any turnovers of those kind of numbers. Reaping the benefits of that mm-hmm. high school defense. And yes, I think that's the biggest takeaway from another Cowboy game was how bad their defense is. And like I said in fantasy, we love bad defenses because that leads to more obviously passing attempts. He had over 50 passing attempts. So, they still lost the game too, which is. I mean, like as fantasy, we don't really care about wins losses, but that that's 
crazy to me that mm-hmm. he's throwing 50, 50 attempts, 500 yards, four touchdowns. Should have thrown eight picks. Right. But um, should have <laughs> threw eight drop, picks. Drop Literally, we, I think we watched five <laughs> picks in defenders' hands, not caught. But um, Mari Cooper is my hold player from last week. Should have held yes. on to him, be patient. And today, today was the day. Finally broke through. And 12, one, like 130. 134 and a touchdown. So, I mean, I feel like anybody in this offense, if you own, can blow up any given At week. At any point. You kind of don't know who it is. Yeah. But if you own a Cowboy, congrats to you. I was only able to get Dak in two of my four leagues. I wanted three or four leagues to have him in all because I was that sure this year that he was going to blow up. He's on pace for 6,800 yards, which is – I think the record's <laughs> only like 50 – maybe at the max 5,500. Mm-hmm. I'm saying not more than that. Yeah, probably not even more than that. But, but the thing is, like, he has a, like, legitimate chance to throw for 6,000 yards <laughs> because, like I said, it's not like he's throwing 500 yards a game and they're 4-0. and Yeah. They're going to need him to they win every ounce, big games like, and come back from leads to even have a chance to make the playoffs. And the NFC East might be the worst. It is. I was discussing earlier, like we might, the league should have to step in and say the NFC East team is not allowed to make the playoffs. That's how, <laughs> that's how bad it is. <laughs> but C.D. Lamb, like we said, another he had two touchdowns. Yes. I mean, that was kind of what you're looking for when you draft in him is to have some random breakout games. It gets, and you want to start him in good matchups like the Browns and shootouts. Any freaking matchup that they're playing they're pretty gonna, much. they're gonna give up 30 points a game so mm-hmm. they gotta throw but, but also another side of the ball a browns player odell finally came around today he was a he was a sell player for me last week which is <laughs> uh not ideal from my <laughs> reputation but the gurus i don't know it was kind of he had two trick plays landry had a touchdown to him touchdown pass and then late in the game he had a like a 50 yard rushing td which is when you hear like odell beckham breakout game you don't think a 50 yard rushing touchdown right. and then a pass from i mean maybe jarvis but baker mayfield owners that's frustrating to watch mm-hmm. you see odo 49. beckham had what do you have three touchdowns right yeah yeah three touchdowns and one of them is from the from baker and one's rushing not like what you like to see but odo yodel but nonetheless finally, finally bouncing out i started him in a draft uh draft kings lineup but okay the rest of the team shit the bed so no uh, bright spot cream hunt Yes, I know. I think he was. I think they were definitely resting him because he was hurt at the end when they were winning by a lot, and that's mm-hmm. why the other two guys were getting a lot of love. But if Chubb, if Chubb's out for a long period of time, I think Hunt could be an easy RB one, in my opinion. It stays healthy for sure. All right, he can run it, catch it. To those of you who join my, uh, join my wisdom and uh, held <laughs> on to the guy, I've been preaching about him for years since he came in the league, and I thought I drafted him in hopes that he would be traded somewhere where he would be utilized as an RB one, mm-hmm. but. Like we said, if if Hunt or Chubb were to go down, either Chubb one's easily a top seven RB, I'd say. And yeah. if it looks like Chubb might be out, then roll with Hunt. And he's a woman beater, but fuck it. He's getting your fantasy points. Yeah, yeah we don't care about that fantasy, <laughs> Rachel. <laughs> Plug him in there. <laughs> Mox, we move on to the Bucks. The Bucks down to the Bucks. Up. Tom Brady came alive. Finally, yeah, finally. I feel like he's he was kind of being like dry. Yeah, he's been good. But I feel like he's been like dry, boring stat dry, lines, yeah. right? But no, he had to drop five TDs, over three hundred passing yards. Herbert's taking him to the limit. Herbert was trying. Yeah. Uh, I think this is kind of an unexpectedly high scoring game, in my opinion. I, I feel like everyone lower. thought the Bucks were going to come out and dominate because their defense is really good. Mm-hmm. But yeah, five TDs from team to Red. five different receivers. That's which is kind of that's crazy. Kind of unexpected. That's crazy. I'd say, yeah, five different is kind of wild. I mean, maybe not. It's Tom Brady, but I don't know. That's crazy. He did hit up. Evans Evans had a nice game. He had seven grabs for 120, uh, 122 yards and a touchdown. So which, it's gotten to the point where we can almost confidently say that if Chris Godwin is not playing, Evans will be a top 10 receiver right? easily. Mm-hmm. And, then and if he is playing, good luck. Dice roll. Good luck. Right. But definitely take – over 100 yards and a touchdown. Definitely would take that. But you're praying that Evans is – I mean, that Godwin's out of the lineup. Yes. If you're an Evans owner. But uh, – Brutal. What we got next here? We got – touch on the Vikings a little bit. I think Dalvin Cook, obviously drafted him as a top five player. Obviously, you're going to use him every week. But it is nice when he has these games where he just absolutely erupts. Yeah, and the – you know, the Vikings, I'm, I'm a Thielen and Jeff- – <laughs> I used Thielen and Jefferson in the same league this week because I was dealing with injuries and COVID – Bull jive, but uh, <laughs> fucking the Vikings are just running the ball every play, it seems like. I understand that you're frustrated that you want to see the passes thrown because you <laughs> own two receivers, but they were winning the game the whole time and having success running the ball, so it absolutely makes sense. 
That's Again, nice. this is coming from a Dalvin Cook owner in one league, but it absolutely makes sense to mm-hmm. use him. I wasn't able to grab him in any drafts, but I was in a position where I could have taken him or Clyde. Right. And I don't know, I guess I just went with experience over, over I took but. Henry over Cook, right? Yeah. He did. He that fell was, in our main league. Cook, kind of far yeah, yeah. I think he went to went seven, seven, I think. I was just scared of the injury history. That's why I took Henry, but So I'm gonna be smart. Can't I complain. take Madison. Yeah. He yeah. scored too today. He did. Unreal. But uh I mean that's the typical Vikings game. They want to run the ball. So I Kirk cook. Cousins threw like twenty pass attempts or something. Again, <laughs> something like that. Brutal. I can't watch him. But Thielen and Jefferson still like they good did both have so good I games. Which kind of, I guess he just throws the ball to them and that's it. And that's what you're it beat like. if you're not one of them. Right. But that's what we like. We like tight uh, usage trees around here in the fantasy community. So. But it, I mean, it's only two game sample, but it seems like Jefferson is definitely someone you can use confidently now. Mm-hmm. He's over 100 yards again, over 20 yards a catch. Each one of his catches went over 20 yards, which is kind of, I think. That's a little, maybe not something you can bank on, but mm-hmm. that's definitely. You want the air yards in fantasy. More air yards, more opportunity, and more opportunity for big plays, and that's what you want. But uh, another player we actually thought, well, actually broke through for once was DJ Chark. Just kind of struggling to start out the gates. Yeah, he was looking a little, little banged nasty. up, too. He was injured. Not a high target share. He's just... Not where you another team that doesn't throw the ball that much as much as, as you think as you would think yeah. you think because they're down in every game but Minshew only averages like I'm guessing maybe like 25 attempts a game yeah. which is on the lower side for sure but he finally did he have two two yep. two touchdowns today yeah. 88 yards two touchdowns nine Jesus. targets which is what you that's uh, what you expect out of the you're first receiver when you're drafting yeah. him. big so. breakout candidate for a lot of people right finally, finally coming through doing something to prove that hopefully he can stay healthy and keep providing this they lost that game right the Bengals yeah they, they the lost to lost. the Bengals yeah Dude, yeah baby chart f- fucked up a couple parlays of mine but uh I was five for six Cowboys blew mine I thought that was gonna be the easiest they, one they blew mine I was there. worried about the Bengals and mm-hmm. they won but, fucking cow bitches <laughs> <laughs> sorry that's my last up, Cowboys <laughs> uh who else who else you want to talk about uh, Mike Davis filling in for my guy that I wasn't able to pick him up Yes, Mike, Mike Davis, Davis is looking like McCaffrey 2.0. Okay, I'm not hearing this. I don't know. That's bull jive. He's been... You put me in the Panthers' uh, backfield, I'll do all right. <laughs> Teddy's checking down whoever's back there. Put Chetty Bagels back there. He'll, he'll produce for you. But no, I think he's looking like the waiver wire... If you got him, you're... Of the year so far. Yeah. Because he's, he's per- like... He's been returning like top 12 RB numbers, maybe even Especially in PPR that. league, so... So, yeah, if you got him, good for you. If you had McCaffrey and didn't get him, that's really tough to watch to know what could have been. Yeah, and I don't think – you think they're going to rush him back, McCaffrey? Or? I mean, if he's playing this well and they're winning, they won today, right? They did, yeah. So – They're 2-2 two two now. So, I guess they're probably – I feel like they should back at normal pace. Yeah, like I feel like they shouldn't rush him, but I also feel like they're not just going to be overly careful with him. Yeah. Like, whenever he's ready to play, he's going to play. If that's I mean, it. if you're 2-2, two and two, you're still obviously trying to fight for the playoff spot. So. If, if they were 0-4, oh then, like, you'd be then like, Then you right. wait, yeah. But if – I guess we'll see where they're at when he's ready because he's probably still maybe two or three weeks away. Yeah. So but Mike Davis is looking like a solid – I'm just saying, if they end up being 4-2 and two and he's not back yet, like, he's going to play just because yeah. if they have a solid chance. I think he's he's looking like a, what, RB two high end two high end. I'm two. going high end two. I wouldn't. I, I think can't you start him with a, confidence every. I week can't say now. he's a one, but yeah, I think you absolutely mat, not matchup not related. You just play him right. every week because he has been the three down back pretty much for the most part. Bonifant is Bonifant had a good game today, yeah. but if he doesn't score a touchdown, his game's not that good. Yep. Oh yeah, I don't I don't get that, but but oh, shit. Not my problem here. <laughs> uh, where are we going now? We're going to the the cho- the, the chokers, the chokers the, of the week, the Duddersons, the Duddersons, the Chokersons. <laughs> if you had these people, you're a frustrated owner, probably. Yeah, some some were, aren't as bad as others. Some yeah. are just underperforming a little. And some were due for a bad game, or you can understand. Yeah, but I think we're gonna start off with the Cardinals as a whole, kinda. Yes, Murray kind of. Did save his day with some rushing yards and some TD touchdown that's, deodorant. That's fifty yard run was crazy. And that, yeah. But the Cardinals again, they lost two in a row now. They dropped two in a row. Uh they're looking like a little sporadic, I'd say. Like I feel like after week two, everyone was like, Yeah, like they're hopped on their bandwagon. They're good. Hard. They're not their schedule is supposed to be awful. And mm-hmm. did they win? 
No, nah, they lost. So they're what two and two. Yeah. And yeah. they were supposed to go five and zero oh based off right. how easy their schedule looked. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm scared. You're, I'm a little scared. Drake played like hurts me to say this is my favorite running back, former Dolphin, but he's playing like shit. He is, and he actually he got hurt at the end. We don't even really know the no extent targets of it. is scary, and the no targets is because he's supposed to be dual want. threat. He's yeah. supposed to do both, and he, that's scary. Uh, Hop, if you're a Hopkins owner, if you're a PPR league, you probably weren't as upset because yeah. seven for forty one, you still get your points from the catches. It's Eleven points. But we are the league I own him in is a standard league, and <laughs> that's not going to cut it. PPR Reggie seven for when we don't forty one is not going <laughs> to cut it in a standard league. As who, someone who came in as the wide receiver one. Not going to do but it. Obviously, that's most likely an outlier. Week. He was also hurt, questionable play. Mm-hmm. So, like, I get all that. But to still see him have seven catches, that makes me think he was healthy enough. Right. And for him, only have 40 yards is not good. And I think, obviously, he'll bounce back. For sure. Yeah. Stronger than ever. Like another one, just like Hopkins, Tyler Lockett had a down week. Of course, uh, the week after, Justin plays me and has him. Of course, of course he gets nothing. <laughs> <laughs> just not very lucky and, uh, out here. But. Only uh, two catches today. Which is obviously not what you're looking for, and Wilson threw for over 350. So I mean, obviously as a lock and owner, you want how he was doing the first three weeks, but he was due. He was due for a little stinker. I mean, they also, I think, looked worse than we all expected to yeah. as a whole. Like Wilson Dolphins. only threw for maybe 250 yards. 350. Oh, he did throw yeah, for three. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jesus! I thought it just seemed like he wasn't doing that. But right. he was getting them scummy David Moore bombs <laughs> at the end of the fucking half. Yeah, that's. But yeah, I think Lockett's definitely just a bad week. Like yeah. it's gonna happen. You can't have someone. He was someone number two receiver coming into the week. So yeah, overall. So unfortunately, you. unfortunately, you. you can't have games like that every week. We wish they right. could, but they can't. That's so, just the way it goes. Him a pass. Still good in my book. But then next we have Daryl Henderson. I think this is actually like probably the most frustrating. I'd say just because of how good he did the last. Two yeah. weeks and what you were expecting, yeah. Like you weren't expecting to on TV and see Malcolm Brown, matchup. yeah. Just game there, like we said, the spread we noticed earlier was 13 and a half. Like, yeah, you expect him to blow them out and him get a lot of the work, but especially off of two strong weeks in a row. And McVeigh saying he's using his hot hand bull jive approach, and then <laughs> Malcolm Brown committees are always frustrating, yeah. you know. That's just the way it goes, and that's this with uh, is without cam makers, yes. So, so you could only imagine that's going to get worse. And we're going to touch on that a little later in the show. <laughs> All right, guy. Yikes. I'm going to have to edit that out. That was a little scary. That was... Oh, shit. <laughs> but nah. Uh, you wanted more than that. But I feel like yeah, people you, got used... Henderson, you got any Rams running back. It's scary. People were used to a high waiver on him, I feel like. Yeah. Like he was well, especially when he gave you production last week. Yeah. Like he had RB2 value last week. And then for him to do nothing is a little, a little rough. But uh, the next one we got here with DJ Moore, who I feel like too many of these is happening for him. Yes, <laughs> it's starting to get to a point where you're like, it's like, come on, bro. What What do you do? Like, yeah, like, what's his name? Anderson's doing well, so there's Robbie. no excuse for him to not be doing well. Mm-hmm. Bridgewater's playing great. Yeah, he's spreading the ball right. He's throwing a lot. There's no reason why he should not. He only had four catches for 62 yards. So, I mean. You want more than that, obviously. Yeah, as you drafted him as your receiver. Yeah, wide receiver two. High end wide receiver yeah. two. He's looking like the wide receiver two on his own team. I, I, I'm I'm pushing, I was pushing for the Robbie Anderson train, and everybody kept making fun of me. I don't think it. it's sustainable for the whole year, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> and I think but. it I think it relatively is. So Okay. He's always been a good player pretty much for the most part. A little boomer bust to him, but he's nine catches Justin today, is huskier yards. than him. Justin has bigger arms well, than Robbie Anderson. Yeah, but. <laughs> don't downplay that bro <laughs> stop it i'm not here notice husky talk did you see him hey robbie i think he legit weighs like 130 Probably. pounds maybe Joey less. range <laughs> yeah uh, pretty close but now nah, dj moore had another low down uh, down week so i mean another dud we talked about him last week saying he was a hold right yeah yeah i think we're getting to the point where it's hard to keep saying every week wait one more week yeah. wait one more. we're getting to the wait point where players. if your it's record like, is not where you want it to be it's hard to bench these kind of players. Exactly. So, I mean, if you're looking to trade one of these guys, like a Moore or a Drake. I think the value is still there. But if you're going to do it, you yeah. got to do it soon. Like if soon, you're before he keeps. Before, A, him. he either blows up, yeah. or B, he does this. It's hard to think he stays in the middle. I would think he either comes back to his projected value, or he just, this is who he is now mm-hmm. in this offense. But 
That'd be a little unfortunate. Yeah. Who else do you want to talk about here, kid? Talk about <laughs> the Tiger King. The the Tiger King, Joe Burrow. I mean, it wasn't really in a bad bad game, but in a spot where we predicted him to have yeah, a he feast. He was on our uh, our feast uh feast. We did a feast or famine uh social media tweet slash segment after the first <laughs> podcast that we're telling you who to start this week, who to sit, and he was up he was our stardom. Like we were expected a monster not a monster game, but it a good game. He still had 300 yards, touchdown, and interception. And he scored 33 points, so I kind of feel like he played a good real-life game. But it's one of those things where, yeah, he played a good real-life game, but he's outside the top 15 quarterbacks, yeah. which is not what you want out of a quarterback, obviously. But two-quarterback league is definitely definitely he's a, useful. Yeah. He was a streamer. He was, like, one of our top streamers for this week. And he didn't play terrible, but we're expecting a little more production from a fantasy wise out of him. Especially the game that scored thirty three points. You definitely mm-hmm. think that he would have more touchdowns than he did. And then the next one we have some four o'clock running backs that <laughs> or just <laughs> what? I just plods. Plodersons. Plodersons. Right? With Jonathan Taylor and Josh Jacobs both with a subpar game. The yards per carry is just not there for them too. Today at least. But they I had think, like identical stat lines, like seventy yards, no touchdown. Yeah. Like just so I mean I don't know what to think of this. I mean, I think it's just a bad game. Bad game. But yeah. I mean, obviously you're going to start them every week. Yeah. Yes. But people were saying these are like RB ones. They like, should be RB ones. You know, top yeah. ten running backs. So. I say we had. Didn't we talk about what we talked about Jacobs last week? Oh no! Just Eric no, asked us what Eric, you should yeah. trade for. It. Yeah. Someone asked Eric, us what you should. trade Another down week for Jacobs. Come shop. I got receivers for sale. I saw you started Andy Isabella. Uh, yeah, I think you took our <laughs> advice a little too far. We were just, we just saying, said roster monitor him. him. Yeah, roster him. Don't and start him. Don't fling in him into your starting league. lineup. <laughs> in a 10 team league over, who did he start over? Gibson. And ten, yeah. Who had like 120 yards and a touchdown. Yeah. So. Sorry, bro. I'm not trying to no. I'm not trying to flame you out here. But. I lost Eckler this week, so I'm, I'm going to need a running back. So, step into my shop. Step into the four and no shop. All right. You heard it. It's heard it here first. <laughs> my shop is open. <laughs> Uh, that pretty much wraps up recapping the recapping of week four. And we're then, taping this as the Eagles game's going on, so that was just the one o'clock and four o'clock. And as the week goes on, we will definitely update what happens in yeah. tonight's game. So and both games Monday night. Yes. So if Carson shits the bed again, this might be the last time I wear the jersey. Y'all, y'all Eagles fans are in trouble because I might start trolling on Twitter <laughs> with y'all again, and y'all are not gonna like me, but. <laughs> All right, the next we got another – we're switching it up around here. Last week we did the buy, hold, sell segment. We did the – what else did we do? That's pretty much it. We did it? the breakouts and duds, but we just it. did it a little differently. But, yeah. This week we're going with a panic meter. Yes. It's basically, it's self-explanatory. Very we're fun. Gonna, yep. Very fun. We're going to say pick a player and then how much we're panicking on them, pretty much, on a 1 to 10 scale. So First up is Nasty McMasterson. <laughs> T.Y. Hilton. Yeah. Uh, you want to say yours first? You I'm say going yours? Uh, 9.9. Okay. I'm not at the full panic yet. I'm not at the max <laughs> panic yet. But I'm very, very, I very – I just traded Minshew in my two-quarterback league, who's my third quarterback, for T.Y. because I needed receivers. Three flexes in that league, by the way. And a three-flex league, who Shout I had out Cortland Jake. Sutton fun out ass, for the year. Fun-ass league. Very fun league. One of the harder ones I've ever been in. Um, I'm 9.9 panic meter because – What's that? That point one, like that point one, is my hope that <laughs> as because I only because I own him in a league uh, is my hope. I hope he comes back. I hope he bounces back. It's very frustrating to watch. Well, he's he's hopeful. That point one, I'm not giving him point one. I'm not giving him point <laughs> two five. That's that's le- that's more than point one. So scratch what I just said. But I'm giving him my mother freaking ten because ten. Yikes. I mean, you're, you drafted him as, like, all right, he's the number one receiver in the Phillip Rivers offense. Phillip usually he should boost the offense, yeah. But they've kind of looked gross to me. I don't know. They like, don't – he doesn't – they don't throw the ball, the ball down, down the field, field a lot. Like we're used to T.Y. getting, like, 40, 50-yard bombs. Yes. And, like, these three I mean, catch – arm slot, that's all you got. You're not really <laughs> getting them beat, them deep balls, but – um, Three catches for 30 yards, I mean, that's just that's just not it, Chief. You're not – I don't think he's gone over – has he gone over 50 the um, whole season? I genuinely don't think yeah. Right, Maybe I mean, once. Maybe week two, I think, was his good game. If you want to double check that stat. Game. Yeah. Game. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, his good game. It was just, He's won over 50 twice, 53 and 52. So. 
Okay. You're drafting him as like – We'll give him that, I, I guess. I, I said this – did we talk about him last week or no? We put him on our famine. Oh, okay. Like well, we, I, wasn't, yeah. I wasn't touching him in any of my leagues. Oh, yeah, he did. I think we did say something about it. He was our, one of our duds last week. Oh, okay. But Shocker. But. Bench him. Do not start him another week. It until might, you it start might even seeing, get to the point where you have to drop him. Like, yeah. it might be that bad. He's not the TY of old. That's for sure. Uh, Next player we have is a player that is in a great offense but is up and down, to say the least, Michael Gallup. Yes. What I'm, you, not, I'm not panicking. I'm giving him a two on the panic okay. meter. I think, like we said, any given Sunday, great movie, by the way, but any given Sunday, Cowboys receiver can blow up. Mm-hmm. The volume is always going to be there. It's not like it's a situation where it's boomer buster. But the volume is guaranteed to be there. Dak will throw 400 yards every week. I hate saying that, <laughs> but he I will. I hope he does. I don't know if he – every week. <laughs> I'm a little fluky I'll be side, shocked but... if he's ever under 350. But I think Gallup is – you probably drafted him as your flex, maybe third receiver. Yeah. So you're definitely – he's definitely a player that you're, you're probably trying to use every week. So yeah. I'm not panicking on him yet just because he's had a couple of bad games, but he's had a couple of great games. So – one good game. One good game. Sorry. So I'm not panicking though. What how about you? My meter's a little higher. My meter's at a five. Thanks. Gallup owners. He's the guru. Just, See what he does. <laughs> I like him, but like with the high scoring Cowboys offense, you also like you kind of think he should be a little more consistent, I'd say. Okay, I can see that. Like he only had two catches for twenty nine yards and five targets today, which is obviously dirt. <laughs> and like if you're it's dirt. <laughs> and last week after he went off for six for one thirty eight, it's like all right, like this is what the potential of Gallup is, but then he puts out weeks like this, and it's like week one and two, three catches, 50 yards. Week two, 258. And it's like, I don't know. I feel like you want more consistency from a wide receiver three on your team. I would and agree with that. And more consistency is out there. I would agree with that. So you're saying panic and make a move or panic and uh, – because five, that's not – you're not – Right. It's you're, kind of – You're not a, giving up. A vague but. answer, but like, I don't know. If you can – if you can look around the league, see what you can get for him. Like okay. he can he can go off any week, but if you want a more consistent option in your team, I think he's a fun flex player to own. Because like if he if he could blow his up for twenty plus points and it's like all right, that might win your league or win your yeah. week, not your league. Boomer bust type player. Yeah. But. So my meter is a little higher for him, but it's not as higher as some other people we have here. We're gonna stay at the wide receiver position here. We're gonna go with Hollywood Brown. Yeah, my meter is gonna be at a seven for him. Sorry, this Jake. Panicking, Jesus. Sorry, Roel. Sorry, Jake. Hitting you that Ravens panic button. Fans, but uh, nah. It's just the offense. It's scary. Yeah. Not trying. It's hard to, to be confident. Sound like a bragger here, but he's another one I wasn't uh, aiming in for to draft any of my four leagues because of the fact that Lamar not even doesn't look as great throwing the ball this year. Like, I don't want a Ravens receiver. Like that's gross to me. I'm not disagreeing with anything you're saying. I am mm-hmm. a Lamar Jackson. I mean, he had, he had eight looks today, which is solid, and then four catches for 86 yards, which isn't bad. But like, he hasn't scored yet on the year. Last week he went two for 13 against the Chiefs, which is <laughs> horrible for number one. I mean, you probably drafted him as a wide receiver three as well. So I feel like I don't know my panic meter. What I said, I said seven, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know. I'm. I think I'm leaving him on the bench for most weeks. Until I, it's, the, it's reasonable if yeah. you if you have the options to not do that. But I feel like he's yeah. someone you took where you might not have someone better. I just the volume is not there for me in this run heavy offense. So, I mean, what you what are you giving him? I'm not, I don't know if I'm just more uh, calm and collected than you, or <laughs> Probably, uh, I don't know. But I'm not. I'm at a five on the panic meter. Like mm-hmm. just like you said with Gallup, like a, it's 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 getting to, it's like we said with um in the other segment. Like it's getting to the point where it's like hard to keep saying to wait a week, wait mm-hmm. a week, and like. Like I like he said, I'm a Lamar Jackson owner. He's not throwing the ball. I don't know why he's not throwing as effectively. They look disgusting. Like they're winning. <laughs> they won today, but like it didn't feel like a like it a, didn't feel like they Ravens were good. Yeah, like it didn't feel like a blowout win. I don't know, but I'm out of five. I'm not panicking. Okay, he's had some bad games. Do you, have, you do? Do you own him in any league? I know no. I do not, but I'm a Lamar owner, so I want to see him do well. Right. That'll boost Lamar, but not panicking yet. Respect it, respect it. Uh, next we have <laughs> – <laughs> sorry for my stuttering if I'm stuttering out there for y'all, you know. haven't taken many uh, public speaking classes in my day, so. so roll, let, it rock, rock, stutter a lot, let it so. rock, let it rock, <laughs> let it rock. Next we have – I feel like we talk about him a lot, but we have Drake. Kenyon Drake, the snake. Snake-o. I'm giving him an eight panic meter, which hurts me to say. 
but it's like it's after today, dude, like 13 for 35 with no targets. It's like, <laughs> Jesus, like you're, that's your. That's after these four weeks in a row, it's just, it's, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I'm not watching every Cardinal snap and what the hell's going on, <laughs> but like, dude, I need to see something. And all these, and then the worst thing is they're all good matchups these last two weeks. Yeah. So it's like, so it's frustrating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, he was like, on our feast list this week, along with a lot of experts. Like they're saying, this is his week. This is his week. This is what we've been waiting for. Like yeah. this is going to provide like validation for taking him. And then he went out and got 11 carries, something like that. 13 for 35. 13 for 35, no targets, no catches, no receiving. It's not what you want to see. I know Tyler's not happy about that. He was on the yeah, couch he was, screaming. He was screen. flipping out today. Screaming That's at fine. me. He's like, <laughs> He's like, bro, what the fuck is what's Drake doing, bro? I'm like, I don't know, dude. Look at the screen. He's plodding. He's plodding. <laughs> Shit, dude. I for doing? once I'm a little higher than you here. I'm at ten. Max ten. <laughs> I'm I'm hitting all panic buttons. You right. if you have him Fire sale and get what you can get. I think he's. I think he's done. Toast. I, th I think he's toast. Burnt toast. I think he's done. Mm. I'm very very nervous for the rest of the year. Cool. Chase Edmonds is probably one of the more efficient players I've ever seen <laughs> as a backup. Like every time he gets the ball, he is plus. Like I don't. He doesn't get a lot of negative plays, and they give it to him in the red zone way more than any backup should be yeah. getting the ball in the red zone. He's definitely probably one of the better. Uh, Best Cliff, backups in the league. Cliff has proved that he is moving on from somebody quick. He moved. They drafted Josh Rosen third overall, and he traded them a year later because right. he wasn't that good and he liked somebody else. So I feel like why wouldn't that be the same if someone's outperforming somebody else, especially when they're starting to struggle now? Mm -hmm. I feel like they can't all be on Kyler Murray, and if the run game's not going to be good, they're kind of toast. So he hasn't proven any. He hasn't done anything to prove to me that it's going to get better. He yeah. doesn't. Ha like he doesn't have. A, one explosive play where it's like, oh, that's Kenyon Drake. Like, he hasn't done anything like that yeah. so far, in my opinion, to prove. So, full 10, panic. Scramble. Brutal. Derek Hagee, scramble. Come sh I'm, I'll buy low on him, you know. I'm still buying low on him. So, if you want to come shop for your receiver on the receiver factory, I breed him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I breed him. He breeds them, folks. Apparently he's breeding them. All right, next on the panic meter list, or yeah, list we got the Rams backfield. Yes. We touched on it earlier. I'm giving it an eight, just because of the fact that like I don't I don't got time to be playing with these committees, dude. Like I want a running back that's going to get. He's four now. He don't got time for okay, worrying about his running. If you ain't backs. producing, if you're not seeing the field, hit the bench, chief. Like all I right, ain't, I ain't messing with that. So like I'm giving him an eight. I'm not. It's every week. It's, it's going to be Malcolm Brown. It's going to be Acres. When he comes back, it's going to be Henderson. You just don't know. So I mean, maybe in deeper leagues, like you can play some of these guys. Mm -hmm. Like in our three flex league, I'll in our probably twelve start team Akers league, you probably have to use any of them because that's how it's been. But. But like I'm just, I hate committees. All fantasy owners hate committees. So I'm giving it an eight. I'm gonna come in at a six point five here. Okay, first, little more first decimal and. Oh, I gave sideline history. Uh, I gave what's his uh, name nine point nine 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 unlimited because I'm. Unlimited, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to 6.5 here because it's only been four weeks, but McVay has proved already that the committee is going to be a committee, and mm -hmm. it's really tough to sit here and say that this person's going to be good this week because all it takes is one big run, and then that person's getting five straight carries, right. and then they're taking over. Like week one, Malcolm Brown was the guy, and then week two, three, Henderson became the guy because Akers got hurt. Akers comes back. He has one good game where he runs like three carries for 20, and then he's the guy again. Yeah. It's just too, too wishy-washy, too un inconsistent for you to have to bank on that every single week. Yeah. But if you like, if you have to use one of them in your flex, they're not bad. None of them are bad. None of them, All of them provide some value, Yeah. and they're all any reliable to score a touchdown. So, I mean, if you I have mean, to use them in your flex or if you're in a multi-flex league, like, you have to use one of them, I'm assuming, but right. I'm a, a little scared. You're for in him. a good offense, so it's like sometimes you're usable, but there's better options out there, and I suggest you get to it. So next we got Josh Jacobs. The plod king. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it seems he was, like. wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad, but he – I'm giving he, him a four. A four? I'm going to go three, so yeah. we're pretty close on close. that. Close. It's like we need we need to see more, like, better running, you know? Still someone you're going to plug and play no matter what. Yeah, we believe in regardless. his talent, and obviously he's still getting the carries. He's still the guy there. It's just something that is concerning to see that 
Yeah, you had 30 points in the yeah, first week, but like... So after week one, week two, we had seven fantasy points. Uh, no, sorry, 10, then seven, and six. So it's like, out of a first, second round pick, you need more consistency. But like, I don't think there's a threat to his job or anything like that. No. And it doesn't help that they don't really have a great defense, so they're not going to be ahead running it a lot. Mm-hmm. So he's going to have to get going early, and I feel mm-hmm. like he hasn't. And the, the, lines, the offensive line's a little banged up as well. So Panic. So not panic slightly. I wouldn't panic. I don't even think it's considered panic. Okay. Maybe three is even high. But shit. Like keep I say, if you ain't producing for me, I'm panicking. I need to win every week. I mean, I think you're using them every week no matter what. Yes, I agree. You take the good with the bad with your great players. Don't panic with him. Next we got I gotta throw a tight end for y'all. I know y'all were asking for a uh, thank you for the feedback like More we said positions. earlier. Yeah. QBs and tight ends we didn't really touch on, which we should have. But uh, see, f- feedback helps. Yeah. So we're going with Mike. Always Jusicki. any leave comments at any time. We're absolutely taking comments yes. all the time. But uh, we're going Mike Jasicki, tight end. <laughs> hurts me. Hurts me to see him on this list. Yeah, he's my breakout guy for the year. Hurts seeing him here, but he's been quiet. Numbers, the numbers last don't two lie. Weeks. Numbers don't lie. Yeah. So what do you what are you giving him? I'm gonna go. I have a little bit on the screen here. I see. I'm gonna go to seven. Yeah. Seven flat. Definitely in the range where you're a little concerned. You're more than concerned because he had – he's. I saw his thing. He's running like 70% of his routes from the slot, right, which yeah. is definitely like very encouraging news because that's where a lot of the, the meat comes from is the slot. <laughs> but two weeks in a row, one catch. Yeah. And Three ma- targets, I was gonna one say catch more for 15 than, yards in back-to-back weeks. He scored last week, which is obviously helps, but like it's that's gross. One catch is gross. You can't, he can't be a top eight tight end and have one catch a game. Like it's – and these and then the Patrick Fitzpatrick throws the ball a lot, like yeah. definitely should it. And he doesn't run like they don't have the time to throw deep routes, so like it definitely feels like it's something that he should be yeah. benefiting from. But so far, it seems like he's not. So I don't know why. But I'm a little panicked. Where, where are you at? I'm going a four on him. I okay. mean, like I still love him as a player, but like I feel like this is more lower. I would be higher if it wasn't the position he's at, like tight end. Yeah, because like tight end you're kind of just like yeah i guess i'm expecting a little much yeah. out of if you don't end, have kels kittle or like andrews you're kind of just throwing your tight end out and hoping you like whoa disrespect am i missing disrespect on my man darren waller <laughs> had a bounce back Sorry, game this week about him every second i feel like he had a bounce back <laughs> game this week fumble loss it hurts but don't be disrespecting my man Waller. Right. but uh you saw in week two he had 11 targets for eight catches 130 yards and a touchdown and it's like all right that shows that's what, what you kind of like hope you can do. That's, right. That's then, ridiculous. Like we said percent. a couple minutes ago, three targets back to back a week with one catches. One, Ain't it. One catch. You can throw me out there. I might get three targets. <laughs> so it's All like, right, that's a stretch. But uh, The big play potential is still there. He year. gets. I think he's like really high so far this year in end zone targets. Yeah. Like in the top like 15% in end zone targets. So that's definitely something. I'm going for. Okay. Because like, like I said, I don't know. It's tight end. It's still my breakout guy. I'm being patient with him. But I am panicking a little bit. We're gonna get throw some throw a couple QBs here at you. Start off with uh, Doobies, <laughs> Drew Brees, Drew Brees, Doobies. <laughs> are you? How are you feeling? Um. Oh. Okay. I'm, flash, <laughs> I'm flashing, Chief. I'm going Dude, ten. Flash. Ten. I don't know. Just like looking at the Saints play. It's like, is he too old? Did he hit the cliff? I think. Yeah, they hit the I cliff. I think. Like. Eagles not are to in the, the red zone. Are they? Yeah. yeah. Y'all better win. Y'all facing Nick Mullins. No better win. Nick Mullins a good. We'll see what but, happens uh, here. Drew Brees, I'm giving him a ten because like I can't I can't watch him sit there and watch him throw ten yard routes anymore. <laughs> I can't do it. Like I, he, he doesn't push the ball down the field. His numbers aren't wowing us. He yeah, isn't the he, Drew Brees of old. He doesn't throw the ball. I think he maybe throws the ball seventeen yards down the field. Right. I don't think he could throw it further than that. Okay, actually, so he, okay, s- he can. But. Sixteen points, twelve, twenty six, which is a great week, and then sixteen. It's like for you. People who are in our drafts that like to be like, oh, I'm waiting on, I'm waiting. Oh, Drew Brees, the 15th projected quarterback. Like y'all underrating them. Like I'm taking him late in the draft. I'm like, all, all right, right. Okay, have, have fun your, with Drew Brees, bro. <laughs> have him on your bench. Y'all I'm sure Michael Thomas so being not there definitely yeah, hurts that him. That does help. I mean, hurt a lot. So I'm, I guess I don't I think guess, he's gonna be able to turn it around. So you're at a 10. So you're saying abandoned. And then Kamara near the red zone. It's like a just vulture city. It's like and like, Murray. But I feel like even when he does like. 
It's where I think like, like real quarterbacking. He's like because like he's still getting th- passing touchdowns. Like because mm-hmm. he threw the that touchdown to Kamara last week when he threw it like yeah. a sixty yard touchdown. He threw the ball ten feet right. and got a passing touchdown for it. Like it's a little ridiculous. But I'm going Eagles TD Wentz run mm. eleven yard run. Is he back? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we'll Jalen get. Hurts, what a man. No, I'm on an eight on Drew Brees. I definitely think if you're using him as your first quarterback. You, you yeah, you gotta evaluate your team. Like, you better have like the Derek didn't get a trade for. You better have the the most stacked roster of <laughs> wide receiver, running backs, tight ends. Or your yeah. defense better be averaging twenty five a game. If Drew Brees is your starting quarterback at this point in the season, I'm at an eight, panicking. Don't want him. He looks like he's fifty there's, there's years old. There's better options out there. Yeah, especially at a deep position like quarterback. So there's literally so many week, quarterbacks. Good matchups. Like no one, no one's trying to just start Drew Brees weekly. Are you having fun? Are they, are you having fun watching Drew Brees if you're an <laughs> owner? Like you're like, all right, Saints are on. I'm about to watch Drew Brees. Like I'm excited. I'm not. No, you're not. Nobody no. is. No one wants to see that. Drew Brees, I'm sorry if you're. We're panicking. If you sorry, see this, bro. Drew Brees, I'm sorry. But that's next brutal. we have this man's jersey, Carson Wentz. Say so he scored a touchdown, but he's on the panic list. We'll see. So you're giving him a what here? Hometown folks <laughs> aren't, gonna, aren't gonna like this, but I'm hitting the. I'm hitting well, the ten. Just... I'm, I'm. I am very, very, very scared. Both as a cat, like not casual. Both as a regular football fan, and as a fantasy fan, petrified for this man. I understand that everyone's hurt. I get that he doesn't have rep- He doesn't have weapons. Greg Ward's the only healthy receiver. Doesn't have this. Doesn't have that. It's their fault. Thinking they can keep playing Deshaun Jackson and not signing receivers that are durable. They're just so old. Like no one, yeah. I don't think anybody thinks about that. They're really, they're one of the older teams in the league. Like it's not like we're ain't no spring chickens running around there. Yeah. Jason <laughs> Peters <laughs> Jason Peters is down again. I'm panicking. Ten. Ten. Panic. I'm giving him a abandon seven. ship if you if you have him. You're not using him the rest of the year. Right. I'm giving him a seven just because of the fact that like I don't know. I still think he's a solid player. And I feel like his talent can like overcome some of these Injuries. Love or... the guy. I don't want people to think I hate him. I love the guy. I'm a lo- huge Eagles fan. Love the guy. But... but from a fantasy standpoint, like when his his MVP, obviously your roster isn't looking too good. And like as a fantasy perspective, I think you go elsewhere. And I don't really think he can turn it around. Based all the receivers he has, and they just yeah. look, they don't look good. Like I don't think like people think like maybe when he's at his peak, like he's at like a what like wide receiver like. 10 I don't like I mean wide receiver quarterback like 10 like yeah. maybe I I still don't even think even when he's if he gets back to doing his thing he's even there I think yeah. he's I think he's done I'm giving him a slight chance to turn it around so and he does provide rushing value too as we just heard yeah, yeah. watch so. watch that knee watch that knee son <laughs> but, um yeah, yeah. so that wraps up our little panic meter panic, panic meter. button let us know how that was yeah, let me know if you like that if you didn't like that if you disagree with anything we said or if you should if you want to suggest a player Someone that you're on your roster that you might be panicking with, let us know, please. Twitter, here in the comments somewhere. Now we're going to touch on a few injuries. We had some key players go down. Uh, Austin Eckler is our first one, who I am an owner of him in our main league, which I'm devastated to hear. It was very early, too, wasn't it? Yeah, first, first quarter. First quarter, it sucks. Looked like he like his whole leg just died. What was the actual injury? I think they said hamstring and <clears throat> hyperextended knee. That's what it looked like. Yeah. I thought it was more hyperextended knee than hamstring, but I right. guess when He's that happens, the there. same thing both happens. But He's supposed to miss multiple weeks, which is brutal. It's a big, big blow to people who uh, are using him. So I gotta. You guys are out there using him. I Josh Kelly, Joshua Kelly, like I'm sure he's owned fumbled really, again. So that's kind of tough. Yeah, I have Kelly on my bench, so I mean, I don't know if I'm really confident in using him. Who Who else is there? Justin Jackson still. And he got love today, didn't he? Tiny bit. So yeah, he's definitely not. I don't think Kelly's someone you can just use. Con- like I don't think he replaces him. It's not like a hunt job you know, type. Jackson thing. has six carries for nine yards today. So, so yeah, I, I definitely think it's someone you could start in your flex or maybe an RB two if you're a little weak yeah. at the position. But well, I'm probably going to go out and try to sell one of my receivers to make up for the loss of Eckler, which is blues because he's one of my favorite running backs, and I was advocating for him. I kind of reached in our draft to grab him in the second round. And then uh, he was rewarding it to this point, I think. Yeah, he was, yeah. yeah. He's playing good. He's a cheat code. That definitely sucks if you're a Eckler owner. Definitely sucks. And we have Nick Chubb, also one of my favorite players. Another knee, another knee injury potentially. Knee, yes, yep. 
So. Read the one thing that said that the Browns are optimistic. It's not serious. I saw another thing that said prepare to be without him for weeks. So it's really up in the air. Like I said, this is on Sunday. So mm-hmm. maybe later in the week we'll find out. This definitely boosts. I think Kareem Hunt, like I said earlier, was only not playing as much because he was injured today. His groin injury. They're trying to salvage him a little bit. Yeah. He's if he's healthy, fully healthy, and Chubb misses time, he's absolutely inserted running back one. I agree. Plug in. You're not matchup. Doesn't matter. You play him. He's going to produce. Yep. And we I saw that dead on. We saw fucking what's his name? D. Ernest Johnson and what was the other uh, guy? Hilliard. Hilliard. Oh my god. <laughs> So annoying to watch. But I think you know, I don't Hunt, think they take the way I they run they, the ball. How much they run? I don't the think ball, they so. eat much of his value if it's just Hunt. Nah, yeah, I don't think so. He's. I think he'll be a uh, RB one, like you said. So, so if, you're, if you got Hunt, if you got Hunt, you're not a chub owner. Congrats. You can even use this maybe as a time to trade him for really high if you can get a lot from him. If, if Chubb's out multiple weeks and you got someone in your league who's maybe one and three, mm-hmm. two and two, zero oh and four, needs a running back. To try to week to week ball, yeah, already definitely try to sell him <laughs> high to someone who's playing week to week in week five. That's a little rough. Week four, week five. Uh, next, we got OJ Howard, who they fear he tore his Achilles, which is it's not a major injury. Yeah. I don't think a lot of people are using him, but it definitely now boosts everybody in that offense yeah. for sure. Maybe you can see Gronk or Brait start to take mm-hmm. on a bigger role, but I think you have to wait and see for that. I don't really know if you're confident starting either of them, but not a big injury, but. I ain't got much to say about him. Yeah, gross. <laughs> he, did, he, he did catch a TD though. But. Didn't he tear it on the touchdown? It's a shame. I think he, he did. Oh, I think he sure. did. That's a shame. He went out like a champ. <laughs> <laughs> Last up, we got my boy Cam. Cameron Newton. Not an injury. Got COVID. So, um, how, so how did he get it? And nobody else. What was it, what was he doing? Maybe he's partying. Did, I don't think he was partying. Like, no. But I think maybe just I don't know something at home. Maybe 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 his kid got it or something. And, yeah. But I they say so. he's definitely not playing next week either because – or it's very, very unlikely that he right. does because by the time he has to quarantine and retest again and make sure he doesn't show symptoms or anything. But – COVID is already starting to ruin this shit. Yeah. Like, we, we didn't get a chance to touch on the Steelers and uh, Titans, Titans, but – Titans and then the Chiefs, Patriots got pushed back. And then we're talking – I asked you earlier. You had Mahomes – Mm-hmm. And he has Nick Mullins. He had to pick up because mm-hmm. we don't know if we wake up tomorrow and they're like, "All right, the Chiefs game's pushed back till week so and so," and then you can't play Mahomes. It's like you're screwed. You're getting a zero and you're losing. So it's like you got to be careful with. That's like in our main league. Playing. I'm facing Q, and like he has now that everything maybe has six players Monday night, yeah. four of which are in that Patriots Chiefs game. So if they don't play, I'm getting a free win, which is kind of beat. Yeah. I don't. I mean, there's nothing you really can do. Uh, what do we? Yeah, like as a commissioner, what do you even do? Like, there's not really a lot of loopholes you can. Oh, but just monitor COVID bull jab and try to be prepared as possible. When yeah. as soon as COVID outbreaks happen, as soon as you hear someone not getting COVID and when they're playing and when they're gonna play, like we were just start with the Mullins situation. I ended up using Mahomes just because I have Mahomes in another league where I didn't have a backup, so I'm just going all in on hoping that they're playing. Yeah. But got to play it safe. Be creative. Definitely, you gotta so, get creative somehow with these with COVID. It's a crazy year. It's gonna be a crazy season. But back to weed. So, uh, next, sort of wrap it up with some waiver ads again for y'all out there. So if you lost this week and you got a high waiver priority, mm-hmm. bounce back and hopefully these players can provide some value for you. But uh, first, we're gonna touch on T Higgins, who we touched on last week, and he also had another promising game this week with. Uh, it's seven targets, four uh, four catches for seventy seven yards, which yep. is good. He also had a drop that was like a twenty yard catch. Yeah. So the, the he's actually he's obviously I don't think anybody expected it. He's definitely getting the volume that mm-hmm. of a wide receiver too, even because AJ is kind of getting bag of bones. Mm-hmm. Justin, the trade wizard over here. <laughs> if you want, Sorry, if you want, if, if you want to trade with someone in your league, please hit up this man, please. Forty nine ers TD. Ayuk, 38-yard run. Let's go. Are you serious? Sorry, God. I Let's benched go. him. It's on Scott's head, you, Scott. Benched him. Benched him. I made a very, oh very lot of questionable him. questionable decisions in the lineup this week. I overthought it. Benched McLaren. I thought he would have a bad game, but I guess he's officially solidified okay. himself as someone who starts no matter player, what. Player, player uh, good players. Player good players, but uh, they're saying they're going to freaking bench Haskins because he's that bad and then that. he throws 300 yards and they only lose by two scores to the Ravens so I guess 
lesson learned there. Yeah, start your good players. Don't panic. Don't overthink <laughs> it. Start your good players. But yeah, T. Higgins, if you got an extra roster spot, Eagles one for two. Scoop him up. And I think uh Ertz got two point conversion on the Eagles touchdown. Did not know that. One. But if the injury happens there in Cincinnati, I think he can be actually like usable. Yeah. T. Higgins, pick him up. Before it's too late. Here. Uh, QB here, Justin Herbert, who I think it is absolutely shown now that if Anthony Lynn says that Tyrod Taylor is the QB when he comes back, he should Dick be up. fired. Yeah. He should be fired if he says that. He's There's no him. way Tyrod Taylor is doing half of what Justin Herbert is doing. Absolutely not. I could be completely wrong on that. I don't know. Absolutely not. 20-25, 290 yards, three touchdowns, one pick. And if he didn't face bomb. Tom Terrific, he might have won the game. Yeah. But they haven't won with him, but they've been in within one score of every, every game, game. Almost. And obviously he provides a boost for the players on the Chargers from a fantasy perspective. Especially now if Eckler's gone, they're gonna just get creative with that offense. Mm-hmm. But I think if they start to turn him loose a little more and like throwing more, mm-hmm. I think he can be a usable Q B either on a bye week fill in or a two Q B so league. If you're in a two Q B league like we are it's a fun player to own. They're a commodity QBs that are low rated. So definitely pick up Justin Herbert. And then we have Scotty Miller. Yes sir. Putting on for the white receivers. You know Tom's gotta use his small white receiver. <laughs> just guaranteed. He'll probably end up on the Patriots when Tom retires <laughs> somehow. He had another pretty good day. Last week he had three catches, 83 yards. This week he had five catches, 83 yards on seven targets. So Goblin's just holding the whole team back. That's all I'm hearing. Everybody does better when he doesn't play. Basically. I don't think you're starting him if, if Goblin and Evans are healthy, but I think if one of them are out. And Which is very – I feel like both of them get hurt point, every single yeah. week, literally. Or Evans, even though he played the whole game, he got hurt multiple mm-hmm. times. So definitely someone that if you're weak at receiver to hold on to because anytime either one of them is out, you can absolutely can use some value. The next play we have, uh, we touched on him earlier, Chase Edmonds. Sir, if he's hanging he's on your radar out there. I mean, on your. Uh, I just dropped him wire. in our main league because I had no choice. Right. But uh, someone's gonna go scoop him. Trade bait maybe for your, uh, your Drake owners. That's the th- only thing I think. I think he still need an injury to like be. I think Cliff should realize who, gonna be who the better back is. Like, I don't think he's gonna be the guy Drake you're benched. He should. <laughs> I got chill. Chase Edmonds, keep an eye on him. And then to wrap it up, we have my boy Dalton Schultz. If you leave disrespecting him, disgusting. Another cowboy player that I'm high on. I guess I just love the cowboy. Because that's the eagle hater coming out with me. <laughs> <laughs> it's disgusting. But, but Schultz had four catches, 72 yards, and another touchdown this week. And a 52 percent of the league, so he's yeah. probably available in your league. 52 percent of the league. So I mean, if you need a tight end, so t- tight ends I kind of been a lot of y'all are slack on very, tight ends, very so. top heavy position this year. Mm-hmm. So if you, if you don't have one of the top five and a five ten team league, that's He's definitely worth picking up. Absolutely. If they're throwing 50 times a game, he's, he's bound so to eat. Any Cowboys cat pass catcher, probably one on your roster. Mm-hmm. Maybe not Cedric Wilson. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then our last one we have is LaVisca Chenault of the Jags. LaVisca, what a name. X. He uh he impressed today as well. He's just – is they use him all over the field. So right. any player like that is definitely – I started him in Jake's league, the yeah. deep-ass league, and he uh came through. So, so he had he, five catches, eighty six yards, and he like five you said carries that, too. Yeah. yeah. So like if you, as a receiver, you're getting anywhere from eight to ten touches a game as a wide receiver. That's volume. That's, touches, that's yeah. yeah. Touches are king, as a uh, Hag said the other day. Touches, Opportunity. Touches are king. Yes, sir. So Lavisca Chanel, twenty. You should uh, go and scoop in your league. And it's the end of the episode. We're also going to be doing two a week now. Yeah, so we're going to be recording big Sunday news. nights. Breaking news. We probably should have said in the beginning. That's but, fine. Yeah. We're going to be doing uh, Sunday and Thursday nights recordings now. Yes, sir. And on Thursday, we're going to be touching up the Monday night games and then giving outlooks for the week. Get into our feast famine, actually break it down a little bit yes. rather than just tweeting it out. And uh, hopefully uh, get you guys some start sits. People want to give us some throughout the week, comment us now. For your, yes. for your next week, we'll comment us on, on Twitter. Oh, comment on this video. Let us know, and we'll definitely get some answers out. To you. If you do it over the week, we'll get it out to you during the episode. Mm-hmm. Give you a shout out a little bit, and if you do it after that, we'll try to get it out on Twitter, try to respond to you. Yep. But uh, definitely just keep the comments coming in, please. So uh, let that, us know. Yep. That wraps it up for this episode. Like always, go subscribe to the YouTube channel, Sideline <laughs> Chatter. 
Go run the views up, you know, go subscribe to our socials. Tell your friends, tell their friends. Yes, sir. We need, all, we need all the support we can if, we try to, if we're trying to get this running Get here. the outreach going for us. Yep. Just trying to make it out here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right everybody. Let's get out of here. Let's get to this Eagles game. Watch y'all lose real quick. And we'll see y'all on Thursday night. Yeah, sir. Deuces.